I cannot remember this much excitement about a new Apple device in ages, probably since Apple Silicon burst onto the scene all those years ago. Everybody wants to know about this M4 Mac Mini. They want to get their hands on it. They want to know what it's like to use. Well, in this video, I can help you because we are going to get hands on with a Mac Mini. Now, if you've been watching my recent videos, you'll know that I have specced up an M4 Pro Mac Mini. It's going to take a little while to be built. The specs on that one were a terabyte of SSD storage, 48 gigs of unified memory. It's got the 10 gigabit Ethernet and also the upgraded Pro chip as well. So it's got the 14 core CPU and the 20 core GPU chip in it. But as I say, that's going to take a little while to come through to me. So in the meantime, I went out and bought another one. I was in London yesterday. My plan was to go and get a base entry level M4 Mac Mini. Can't be got. They are so popular, they have been flying out the stores. And I went to London's three flagship stores, to Covent Garden, Regent Street, and Brompton Road. There wasn't one to be had. So the, the Mac we have here is just that next tier up, almost, almost a Mac that I suggested you should spec in one of my videos last week. This Mac has got the 512 gigs of storage on and 24 gigs of unified memory. And I've set it up today, I've installed a few apps on it, and we're going to see what it's like to do a general day's work, kind of a general day's work that I would do. So we're going to be exporting something out of Audition, we're going to be exporting a video out of Final Cut. I also took it home to see what it was like to hook up via the HDMI port to the TV, and try and explain why this buzz around this Mac Mini is going past just us Mac users. Later on, I'm going to be by, joined by another creator to discuss that as well. If this is the first of my videos you've seen, possibly because of the M4 Mac Mini, my name's David, and I make videos about Macs and Apple gear every week. Why? Because I'm surrounded by Apple gear, and I love chatting to you about the Macs and all the devices that I'm using. But it looks like around about 90% of you that are coming onto this channel and hopefully enjoying the videos aren't yet subscribed. It's a one and done. If you're watching it and enjoying it, just go and subscribe for me. It makes a massive difference, more than I can tell you. We've had a real good growth recently, and I'd love, love, love to get to 15,000 subs by the end of the year. One of the videos I made on a Mac Mini recently, for me, kind of did quite well. It got 40,000 views, over 400 uh, comments on there, and 700 subs. You guys are brilliant, and you're helping the channel to grow and allow me to go and get these Macs for you and test them out. So, back to this Mac Mini. I came in this morning and I'd signed into my iCloud account, of course, and then I downloaded Final Cut, Ulysses, Chrome, and from Creative Cloud, I've downloaded Photoshop, Lightroom, and Audition. We're going to show you all of those pretty much, apart from Ulysses, in action through the course of this video. Now, bear in mind that everything you see happening on this Mac Mini, in the background, Chrome was running with about 20 tabs open. And so and there's quite a few apps open as well. So I've tried to push it as much as I possibly can. And of course, during the course of the day, I've been monitoring it, looking how it's been getting on. It's never got warm. It's really cool to the touch. And of course, no fans have spun up at all, as you'd expect. I'm not going to bore you with too much detail on the machine itself. You know what it looks like by now. Yes, I'll put some lovely B-roll shots here and there to show you. But basically, the two ports on the front are really, really handy and useful to use. I've had an SD card reader put in there today in one of the ports at the front and also some external storage as well for transporting and moving files around. Those ports on the front are super, super handy. The power button on the back really is an issue. Once it's turned on, it's on. Simple as that. You don't ever think about it again. It's not an issue at all. Oh, and I remember to let you know the speaker is actually decent as well. I was listening to some podcasts this morning. It's a little bit bassy, it's a little bit muddy, but if you just wanted some background sound, some music while you're working, it will do. So I think now it's time we get into actually putting this thing to work and we'll start with Final Cut Pro and exporting a video file both on my M1 Max MacBook Pro and also on the brand new M4 Mac Mini. The first file we're going to work with is a video file. It's from my Minus 16 podcast with Daniel and Alex who went up at the weekend. It's an hour long file. It's a 1080p video file that's going to be exporting off of the M1 Max MacBook Pro and in the background off the Mac Mini as well. The MacBook Pro smashed it here, delivering it in five minutes, 14 seconds, while the Mac Mini took a minute longer, but that's not too bad, at six minutes, 31 seconds. Next, we're going to extract the audio from that same file in Audition, and here, actually, the Mini did it fractionally quicker, in 35 seconds as opposed to 40 seconds on the MacBook Pro. This is just looking at Photoshop document, a multi-layer template. You can see there's no beach boarding, there's no delays, it's really smooth. And here, I'm adding some presets out of Lightroom and exporting 10 photos all at once. There were some questions recently as well about how well it would work 
with the HDMI hooked up to a TV. And here you can see when I popped home today to show you, it's working absolutely fine. Did I have any setup problems at all? I could easily sit and work at home from the table using that as a monitor. I mentioned a little bit earlier on that I was going to be joined by another creator. That's Daniel from Tech with Benefits. He's on the podcast with me as well, along with Alex from Gear and Tech. Daniel is a passionate, passionate Samsung user. If you haven't watched his channel, any of his videos, go and take a look. The man loves his Samsung devices so much. It's a real infectious joy to watch. Now, on the back of that, Daniel has actually said to me over the weekend, he's almost thinking and tempted by this M4 Mac Mini. So I just wanted to get inside of his head, somebody that's never used a Mac before, and find out what it is about this Mac Mini that has caught his attention. How you going, David? I'm really good. I'm really good. Now, we were chatting on our group chat last night, and um, you said that this Mac Mini has even caught your attention. Now, perhaps if you're watching my videos, you don't know about Daniel's great channel, Tech with Benefits, which is purely Samsung. And a man's got so much enthusiasm for what he loves. It's a lesson to us all. And I've tried to bring a little bit of that over into the Apple ecosystem world as well. But that to one side, for somebody that's a diehard PC user, and been editing on PCs as well. What's capturing your attention about the Mini then? Well, I think the form factor, to be honest, like I've always loved compact sort of tight bits of tech. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the Mac Mini, especially this new one, how it can sort of fit in the palm of your hand and it's very square, but also very rounded. I love, I love the design. And I think that's kind of was my first sort of appeal of it is the, the finish and how it's sort of been constructed. Mm -hmm. And then it's a really good entry level device into like the world of Mac. Yeah. And yeah. I think if I'm going to try and in the future, talk to Samsung users or talk to iPhone users and say, Hey, you can actually use a Samsung with your Mac. Cross I feel platform. like th this might be like the perfect sort of gateway to show that world off. And yeah. I guess the design is kind of like the first thing that kind of sparked my brain about that. Yeah, I mean, because you've never used Apple Silicon either, which is just, I'm just in the middle of doing a whole lot of uh, testing and doing exports of different sort of audio and video files. And this thing seemed ridiculously quick. I'm testing it against my M1 Max MacBook Pro, which was a three and a half, four thousand pound machine when I got it three years ago. And it's made my workhorse. I mean, it never complains, but the tests I'm doing so far, it looks like in three years time, this, this is just the basic M4 chip I've got in this mini here. I've got an M4 Pro coming. But while that's being built, I thought I'd do some tests on something that's just off the shelf. And so far, I, honestly, this thing would fly for you. It's not even warm. And I've been exporting video files, audio files. I'm going to do some Photoshop tests in a moment as well. Um, and it's just flying. It's, it's every bit as good as you're hearing. It really is. And it's tiny. It really is so small. That's the thing. Like, at the moment, I feel like it would take up less space in my setup that I've got than my laptop does. Oh, because, hugely. All right. And that actually because i do most of my editing sitting or at standing at my desk so yeah i don't really need to have a, a machine that moves around for editing when i am on the go like traveling then obviously i will but but, but again yeah. you've got an external you've got uh, an external display you take with you haven't you a, a small external I do. display yes I do. so yeah. you know to be honest this is going to be lighter than the laptop keyboard mm. mac mini mouse display yeah, stop, stop making me spend money. <laughs> it's my turn. It's my turn. I just wanted to get, it was really interesting, get mm. perspective of somebody that's outside of the Apple world that's it's even going across barriers and making you tempted, which is really interesting. That's why I just wanted to grab a quick word with you. Because yeah. this machine, it's causing waves at the moment. People are just really hooked onto it. I think the, the fact that they had a design change is probably something that I think has definitely hooked the yeah. right people. It's definitely hooked me. Like yeah, I've watched so many unboxing videos on it, and mm. I just I like the compact sort of way they've packaged it, and then also the compact nature of the device itself. It's really, it's really appealing, and then the, to have the power that goes with it inside something like that. Yeah, exactly. And no fans, just, no yeah. fan noise. It's oh, quiet. God, that would be nice. Yeah, exactly. Very nice. <laughs> it's been working since. Uh, what we now? I think it's been working for about five hours so far today. Nothing, not a peep, which of course I've got used to now. Mm. But it'd be something yes. to be a real treat for you. You Apple Silicon elitists. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Daniel, I, just, I know it's sort of late into the evening. I just wanted to grab a quick word to try and get this video out later today if I can. But um, it was just really interesting to get your perspective on it. So thanks for making a few minutes for me. No, of course. Don't worry. Cheers, mate. Lovely. Thanks, I'll catch mate. you in a couple of weeks' time for the next podcast as well. Will do. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Yeah, bye. And that's exactly what I meant about this Mac Mini. If somebody like Daniel that had never even considered 
using or buying a Mac before, if he's considering it, and he won't be alone, then Apple have managed to tap into a brand new strain of customers. They have suddenly unlocked the door to people they weren't able to get to before. Now, we all know that the extras, the upgrades on Apple are eye-wateringly expensive. I've talked in other videos about whether it's worth getting the SSD internally and also the benefits of extra RAM. But if you do tick those boxes, they are really, really expensive. But there's a reason for that. Apple kind of shot themselves in the foot with Apple Silicon. It's too good. People don't need to change. My M1 Max MacBook Pro, I swear, is as fast today as it was the day that I got it out of the box and started using it three years ago. And that's been used heavily every day for three years. These things are bulletproof. They are just too good. So with that in mind, they, Apple knows that people aren't going to be changing their Macs three or four years. It's probably going to go out to 10, 11 years. That left them with a hole to fill. They need to generate revenue. So to fill that hole, they're obviously charging a lot more for the upgrades. It's up to you whether you decide to go with them or not. But that's, I think, part of the reason they cost so much. So the other thing that Apple are going to have to do, I think, to entice us to change, again, it's something that Daniel just touched on there, is design exciting new hardware. And that's exactly what they've done with this Mac Mini. When I first got home last night and took it out of the box, it's just beautiful. I don't know if it's, it's so small and solid. It's just sturdy. It feels great. It's great in the hand. Not that we hold it much, but it looks great on the desk. It takes up such a small footprint. And yet it's so, so quick and performant to use. It's a great design. Maybe that is kind of the angle that Apple are going to have to go to entice us to change Macs more often than we actually need to. So there's been a lot of hype over these last couple of weeks about what these M4 Macs were going to be like. And the M4 in this Mac Mini has really surprised me. Yes, it was slower on that video export, but again, that was an hour. That is a long, big file to export. It was a little bit slower, a minute slower. But apart from that, this thing has been every bit as good to use as my M1 Max MacBook Pro, which cost me three and a half thousand pounds when I bought it. Just goes to show you how far these things have come on. And that is making me really excited to get my hands on my Mac Mini, the M4 Pro Mac Mini when it comes through. If this is this good, just imagine what that one's going to be like with all the extra specs on that machine. The difference between my M1 Max MacBook Pro and that Mac are going to be so close. I'll be doing the same test on it when it lands, and hopefully, hopefully it's going to be dispatched soon. I thought I just looked at the latest information and it's preparing to be shipped. So hopefully it might even turn up this week. And if it does, it means I can do a side by side with my M4 Pro Mac Mini and the Mac Mini that I've got here and see how they compare. And obviously to the M1 Max as well, and just begin to see if that money is well spent and if you should go out and spend the extra money on an M4 Pro. It's a really, really exciting time. And it's another good reason to get subscribed, by the way. This Mac really shows that Apple are back. They have got everything right with this machine almost across the board. And this video explains why I think we are living in a golden age of being Mac users.